to sue. They want to change it to it's just you have to prove 100% that it was for racial discrimination. But at the same time, we have a lot of us hailing the film that was put out by a subsidiary of Comcast of the Revisionist History. And I would like to know why we don't make it a fact to teach our children the true history of this country and why we are in the economic situation that we are in as a group. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. Mr. Joshua St. Louis. Hello, um, my name is Josh St. Louis. I'm a teacher at Bladensburg High School. A lot of teachers have concerns about the climate and culture at our school, specifically a culture of fear and mistrust between teachers and administrators. The last teacher who attended one of these listening sessions was harassed and reprimanded on her personal cell phone outside of business hours. Another teacher was accused of stealing and was reprimanded behind closed doors for engaging in FAC and PGCEA activities. In addition to this, other concerns that teachers have are faulty equipment to include printers not working and classrooms being at 80 degrees, teachers not having keys and being locked out of classrooms and without access to the elevator, floating teachers being penalized and reprimanded for the way the classroom is set up, core tested classes taught with long-term subs, teachers being written up and reprimanded for not submitting emergency sub plans while the school does not use those sub plans, Teachers being threatened to be reprimanded for not attending collaborative planning. This collaborative planning prevents us from attending IEP meetings. Students with IEPs and seniors having schedule changes as, as late as last week, a week before the quarter ended. Teachers having schedules changed without their knowledge. Limited parking because our parking, lot, parking is not enforced and local residents park at our school, taking away spots for staff and students. Finally, staff members, students, and parents have been submitting numerous alert lines all over the year and have participated in the elephant in the room procedure. These issues, along with others, are causing a massive turnover rate at our school every year, with teachers moving to other schools or quitting teaching altogether. The question is, what can we do to help address these issues and stop the turnover? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. St. Louis. And Ms. Laurier Lorenzo. Uh, good evening, Dr. Goldson. I know you mentioned that you had addressed the student-teacher ratios and that was progress that you made, but I wanted to know a little bit more specifically um, how you're addressing the student-teacher ratios in your elementary um, Title I schools. Okay. Thank you so very much. Thank you for the first group of five. We'll now move forward with the next group, starting with Nakia Nicholson. Nakia, up here, go to that side, please. Next is Deborah Woodard. Okay, thank you. Next, we will have Anne Marie Coleman. Ms. Anne Marie, okay, if you can please stand as well. Followed by Alfreda Johnson. Alfreda. Okay, she's making her way. And then next is Raynate Brevard. Okay, thank you. Ms. Nakia Nicholson, please. Hi, Dr. Golson. I want to just say congratulations. Um, I come to you here on behalf of my nonprofit called Woke, working on behalf of kids in education. And I was invited by Ms. Um, Dolores Milhouse to help become a part of the think tank around some of the issues. I did attend uh, the first listening session uh, last month and uh, I'm really happy that we're having some discussions about it. And some of the themes that I um, observed was around student achievement, the safety, this uh, uh, social and emotional component, and then lastly, transportation. And so my question is, how can organizations um, who represent the community, the broader community like myself, become a partner in this work um, to help identify some creative solutions um, around brainstorming some ways that we can attack some of these issues. I live in Prince George's County and while my children have um, gone on and graduated and moved on from college, I still uh, want to become a vested partner in this work. Um, and something that I believe that can help us close the gap with our students. Um, obviously, we are right uh, behind uh, Baltimore City, and I know that our county can do so much more with our students, 
Um, but I'm thinking that we can do more around training and development of our school leaders, um, really helping them to understand how do we get better faster. So we have some things that are in place, but how can we provide an additional layer of intensive support for them so that they can begin to address some of these issues around student achievement, around their interim assessments? How do they reconfigure uh, their schedule so that they are being more impactful around their standards? And how can we address some of these safety issues around upgrading their uh, teacher and leader radar so that they can uh, take advantage of some of the programs that you have um, that are useful for some of the leaders that may be underutilized. How can we teach our leaders, our teachers, as well as our parents around the social and emotional component by instituting things like advisories that help bridge and build relationships in the classroom um, simply because the level of issues that students are facing is exponentially different from year to year around uh, the drugs, the abuse, and some of the other uh, trauma that kids are exposed to. And then lastly, how can I or individuals like myself become a partner in helping you think through how do we bring on consultants or contractors that would assist in the transportation piece? And we know that transportation is always going to be an issue. However, they may be business partners that want to partner with Prince George's County and assume some of those responsibilities on a contractual level. Thank you so much, Ms. Thank Nicholson. You. Next, we will have, and give me a moment, so I'm going to do this manually with my timer until we get everything set up. So I'll start with two minutes, Ms. Anne-Marie Coleman. Dr. Golson, last week Daniel and I had a meeting with Ms. Vanzana Lee from your offices regarding the bullying and awareness program for PGCPS that we asked about two weeks ago. Thank you to Ms. Vanzano Lee for all of her hard work on this and to you for truly leading the way. I do have questions and comments though that Daniel and I have formulated. A program, no matter how fabulous it is, is only as great as its implementation and its utilization and in learning how it can be improved. Since our meeting Friday with Ms. Vanzano Lee, I have personally spoken with students and parents from five schools. Four out of the five schools did not utilize any of the program at all. Therefore, I have to say that there is still work to be done. Ms. Manzano Lee is so dedicated, but she is one person. And there are over 200 schools in our county. I would like your permission to volunteer to visit schools, sit with their counselors and admins, and ask them about this program, and provide written feedback. It only works if we know what works and what doesn't. PGCPS should and could be the leader for bullying awareness in this country. We need to address how our students can defend themselves from bullying without suspensions. I would like to help with that also. To my fellow parents, did you know that your school has access to this program? Do you know how it's being implemented in your school? It has tools and information in French and Spanish for all of our families. Did you know that your teachers and admins can adapt the program to meet your child at their age and their grade level? Is your PTA getting tools and workshop ideas from it? Is your PTA or are your sports teams and clubs also engaged? Did you know one activity of this program has bullying awareness stickers for your athletes' helmets to remind them and fans about bullying? Does your school have posters up? Mine didn't. Did you know there was a countywide cheer competition for every school level? And did your school participate? My Daniel shared a little bit about what he lived through. He would not have been alive to do so if he had listened to the bullies and if I had not been, as he put it, stubborn. I beg you as parents to keep watch, stay engaged, ask the tough questions, and talk with your school and PTA about their use of this program. Thank you, Ms. Anne Marie. Ms. Alfreda Johnson. My question is to reiterate what the um, lady spoke on earlier, the Title I elementary schools and the parent-teacher ratio, the, um, parent, the teacher-to-student ratio. Um, I'm asking this on behalf of someone else, but uh, their child has 30, between 30 and 32 students in second grade to one, te first grade to one teacher, and that seems awfully high. And there are issues in the classroom because of that. And my second question is related to summer school. The evening summer school for the past school year only had one school, which was Suitland. 
Um, we are working parents, and if we unfortunately have to have one of our children, my child had to attend summer school for Algebra One. We had to go to Suitland. I worked, and that's the only time I could do was evening. It was atrocious. First of all, Suitland, as you know, is um, a very old school. They even missed some days because of the electrical problems, so the school had to close. That was one issue. The other issue was it took 30 minutes to get in and out of there just because the amount of people that attended the evening summer school. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. The last group is Ms. Renee. Good evening. Um, I'm hyperventilating from the young lady that just spoke about the bullying because that's my concern. My granddaughter attends Benjamin Tass, the middle school, and she has a disability, and she was being bullied at school. And on National Bully, Bullying Day, we would go to the school, get a, well, number one, she had a panic attack. And it was at the end of the day, they put her on the bus, on the school bus, instead of sending her to the nurse. We went to the school, you know, we're getting responses, oh, we have a lot of children in the school. You know, you don't want to hear that when your child is being bullied. So my question is, because I don't want to add, she already summed everything up. But my question is, how are the school staff, how are they trained to handle these situations? I also went to Ms. Manzano, and I know that she is one person. I called uh, the Board of Ed. I forgot who I spoke to, and I said that we kept her home from school. And the response that the young lady gave me was, well, you know that's not an excused absence. Do you care about an excused absence if you care about your child's safety? So that's my question. I don't believe they're properly trained. And on the day of, I'm so, I'm sorry, I'm so passionate about this, but on the day of that we went to the school, I kind of thought that the principal, the only person they had on a national bullying shirt was the counselor. And I think the whole staff should have had it on. I think it should have been a big deal that day, and it wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that second group. We'll now move forward with the next group. We're starting with Teresa Jones. Followed by Christopher Miller. Followed by Mr. Torbay. Vaughn. Was that close the first time? Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Next, David Nash. And last in this group is Niquette Banks. Niquette Banks. We'll start with Teresa Jones. Good evening. I didn't realize we were going to only have two minutes, so I'm going to read really fast, but I have really important concerns I wanted to, um, to speak to you about today. And, and if I could just stop, interrupt you just yes. one moment. If you, if you have to stop you at two minutes, if you have something written format, please leave it with our staff, and we'll be able to have that information. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, I'm the great aunt of Robert Stevenson IV. He's here with us tonight. Um, he's a graduate. Um, from kindergarten of Cora L. Rice Elementary School, and he's a first grader um, in their school at this time. Robert has an uh, individualized education program, IEP, from PG County that mandates that he have a one-to-one -one assistant in the classroom with him every day. That hasn't happened. Since September, I've been sitting in with Robert from 7.45 a.m. until 1.50 p.m., to ensure that he does not miss out on what he needs to succeed. Um, right now, we've had a revised date that his aide is going to be in the classroom with him. It's supposed to be sometime in December. That is so unacceptable. This should have happened in September, and now we're looking at December. I don't really have any faith that that's going to happen either. Um, his mom, Erica Stevenson, is here tonight. She did address that issue in an email to you, Dr. Golton. She sent an email to you on the 30th of September concerning this issue, and you emailed her back and copied Dr. Mason, 
a and the email response was Dr. Mason um, or a member of her team would reach out to Erica and address this concern. This has not happened. We're still waiting for a response. My other concern at the school is the playground. I go out there every day with the kids. I have since September, and the kids are playing on dirt and wood chips. Right now, I have a sample that I'm happy to leave with you. It rained three days ago. They're playing on mud and wood chips. During the, the warmer weather, they were playing on dust and wood chips. It's not only unsafe because of the possibility of getting head lice, but also, excuse me, also, there's no safety in it. If one of the kids hits the ground, it's just like hitting this concrete floor. You know, it's actually a joke that when the kids go out and they're playing in there, they get dust clouds. It's almost like a, a Charlie Brown pig pen kind of situation. It's so unhealthy, so unhealthy. Thank My you. other concern is class size. Mr. Jones, you probably have about 30 seconds. Remaining. I'll do very quickly. Thank class you. size and substitute, certified substitutes. Um, a couple of weeks ago, the substitute teacher in Robert's class was the aide. They did not have a substitute. She was not certified. She was a human body, an adult, and she taught the class all day long. That is not acceptable. And this is not an exception. This is pretty much the rule at Cora L. Rice. It happens all the time. It needs to be addressed. So if you want me to put it in writing to them, I have no problem putting it in writing to them. But there's a lot of issues at this school. These are only three of them. I got two minutes. I hope that you address those concerns. Thank you so Thank much, you. Ms. Jones. And please leave the written statement. Um, I think someone will be able to how long receive that from you. I'll leave the soil sample as well. Okay. It's horrible. The Thank gentleman you. behind you will be able to ask you some questions. Thank you. Christopher Miller. Hi. Uh, good evening. I'm a graphic arts teacher at Bladensburg High School. Um, on October 16th, seven weeks into the school year, I logged on to SchoolMax take attendance of my second period class and I discovered that my third period computer graphics 2 class was missing. No students, no roster, no grades. It was replaced by an empty computer graphics 1 class and I sat in an empty room that day. Uh, this is done with no notification to myself or my students, all of whom had their schedules completely changed. Dumbfounded, I messaged all of the assistant principals, all the guidance counselors, the principal herself, and the person currently appointed to scheduling asking if a plan had been put into place to notify me how the class, currently with zero students, would proceed. The only response was from the scheduler, saying these concerns should be directed to my administrator. After two more emails, I have yet to receive a written reply to my questions regarding academic procedures. I was stopped in the hallway by the principal three days later. She commented on the tone of my emails, and then proceeded to tell me that canceling an entire class was within the scope of leveling class student numbers, and a notification was not necessary, as our admins and department chairs had agreed to and discussed such changes at the beginning of the year. Both my AP and department chair could not recall agreeing of uh, could recall an agreement of classes being canceled. This problem is part of a larger issue of communication at our school. We have staff meetings where the threat of our grades being audited looms large. We are personally saddled with the burden of lowering test scores and ask time and time again what our solutions are for problems that the school has at large. But the day-to-day -day procedures and styles of communication do not line up with this tone. Unanswered questions, emails with no reply, and initiatives that are championed on one day are left with no follow-up the next. We are effectively being gaslit every day at our school. I know the point of this <laughs> session is to ask questions and not rant for two minutes, um, so I'm going to end with this question that I still have yet to be able to get a straight answer to. What are the academic procedures I should follow for a class with three students that has only existed for two class periods but I need to submit grades by midnight tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Miller, thank you. Mr. Tabron. Good evening. Thank you uh, for your work with, I, I'm part of the library media literacy, library media work group that was finally established after seven years of me being into the board meetings and politely and respectfully asking for changes. After seven years, it's been a little bit hard. I finally see a little bit of a glimmer of hope that our program has some value here in our county. Um, there's still work that needs to be done. Having two schools with, with 1,850 children, I start with the second largest school, Mary Harris Mother Jones, 
as well as Riverdale Elementary, that's appalling. Our students need smaller classes and such. Um, it would also be very nice, and I hesitate to use that word because research in the state of Maryland and elsewhere shows that library access for all of our students with the appropriate staffing levels, research materials, directly impacts student learning as well as their love of literacy and literature. We are not at those levels and we have never been since I've been in this county. The average collection date of our books, I dare to say at our county is about 2002, well before many of our kindergartens, fifth graders and eighth graders have been uh, born. And I'm trying to teach them how to use these collections to learn and prepare them for the, this current century of learning. $2.50 or $2 a student is not nearly enough to replace the materials that I am weeding and getting rid of because they are outdated from the 1980s, having poor demographics and poor representation of our diversity. Our world has changed. We need to change with it. So I would appreciate looking and continuing the, li the literacy, w the library work group, looking at staffing levels to bringing it back to an appropriate MSDE recommended level of staffing. In terms of class size. Uh, sir, you have 30 seconds remaining. Thank you. Remaining. Thank I'm you. at Mary Harris Mother Jones. We have 1,150 students. We have 20 buses coming in. Our teachers stay an hour late regularly. To, and I'm not faulting the teacher, the principal. She's providing excellent leadership, doing what she has to do under these conditions. We need to drop the class sizes. We need to re redistrict. Our playground at Mary Harris Mother Jones still has six inches of water plus covering the entire toddler playground, excuse me, the elementary school playground for kids after multiple repairs. My library has been without light, a proper lighting for two years. I've got light bulbs waiting to be put in there. All we need is a lift. All right, thank I've you, I've got sir. 20 light bulbs that are burned out. Thank you. Out of the 60 that are there, thank you. We'll make sure someone speaks to you right after as well. Thank you so much. Mr. David Nash. My name is David Nash. I'm with the National Institute for Health, National Library of Medicine. I run a mentoring and medicine program which is nationwide. Its greatest effect is in the parlor, where I work hand in hand with schools and situations that are that are identified with some of the problems or some of the concerns that we have here. And uh, I I'm just floored by all of these concerns and everything. So I'm going to give you my email address. That's dn19i at nih.gov. Please take the opportunity to contact me. There are concerns, but they can be addressed when we come together as a team. And remember, the strongest chain is always the last weakest link. And I'm not here talking politics. I'm talking about the children. We all are angry about something. But if we don't come together and do something, nothing will happen. Okay? I know I, I have heard so much anger in this room tonight. I'm like, boy, anger, anger, anger. And that's okay, guys but come together with some solutions. I know most of you will listen to the Black Eagle program every morning. And what, is, what does Joe Madison say? What are you going to do about it? And let's come together unilaterally and become successful. I have an open door, an open mind, and God knows I have a wonderful time going to Flowers High School. I had a wonderful time when I came to this school. I had a wonderful time when I go to Kingsford School. I have good times when I'm all around the country. Yes, I'm seven feet tall, and bullying is not an issue for me. Mr. Nash, you have about 30 seconds remaining, sir. In the 30 seconds, guys, just, you know, talk to the kids about the bullying, because I talk to them all the time. And like an open door, open mind, I'm here all the time. Thank all you. Right, thank you so much. Ms. Maquette Banks. Good evening. I'm a parent of TMIT North High School. Um, I understand that your office has received some issues and concerns that we are currently dealing with. 
But I'm here today because it seems like it's a consistent theme in this room with school climate, bullying, things of that nature. So I have a question. Um, in your bullying initiative, are charter schools included in that? I also would like to know what the steps you would take when administration, teachers, support specialists, who as this young lady mentioned over here, are not necessarily trained in the manner in which to deal with and speak with students, um, because we're dealing with an issue of respect not going both ways, right? As an adult, you're supposed to set the precedent for respect, and it should go both ways. So we're trying to figure out in our school community um, how PGCPS, your office, and the board of TLF can work together to help us alleviate some of these problems. Like you said, sir, we've come together as parents. We formed a parent group, right? We've had several meetings. We've been sending several emails um, to make our voices heard. We have offered solutions. We have offered meet us halfway on certain things. Um, but yet it's going nowhere. So you have some communications from us. Um, we received some communications back. We were told or reminded several times that we have our, our children, our young scholars in CMIT North High School, and that's a choice school. If we don't like how things are going, we can take them out and put them somewhere else. Ms. That's Banks. not the solution. Ms. Banks, you have 30 seconds remaining. So I would like to leave you with that. Again, some of us are not going anywhere, right? I was here last year. I'm going to be here this year. I'm going to keep at it. Um, but we do, we need to work together, right, to see some changes for our young people. Thank you. Great group of questions and comments. We thank you so much. We'll now move forward with the next group, starting with Nicola Gross. Nicola Gross. Followed by Tamika Sanders. Tamika Sanders. Next, Joyce Sharps, followed by Sherry Howard, Faye Powell, and this last group is Dolores Milhouse. First one is Nicola Gross. Good evening, and thank you, Dr. Golson, for coming here. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, I'm a parent, and um, I have s several schools, different um, schools, but <clears throat> I'm also a parent at this school right here, and I have a wonderful principal. I thank God for her. She's really a wonderful person. Um, my question um, basically is, is, could we revisit kind of a little more um, racial um, profile as far as having more um, African Americans with Caucasians in the school instead of just mainly all African Americans and then maybe a few uh, Caucasians or all Caucasian maybe just a few African Americans. The reason why I'm saying is because when I grew up it was a little more uh, diversity in the races and when you have that when they go out in the work well it's not just all African Americans and someone they're dealing with different races of all kinds so I'm thinking if they grow up learning that in the school then when they go out there they'll be productive men and women because they're learning how to deal with different races and different instead of just one um, this is just something I just want to know if it can be revisited because I know at one time when I was going to school they had more um, they bus from different places here. I was in C. Pleasant. I was bused all the way to Hydeville, Blainsburg, but now it's like your neighborhood school. I'm just asking if it can be revisited that they can think about maybe doing a little more so they could be more diversified in the schools. But thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Gross. Next, we'll have Ms. Joyce Sharps. Hi, good evening. Um, I am a grandparent. I am here uh, representing my daughter. Unfortunately, we have issues with the transportation department. Um, I've had several emails written to the previous administration as well as the current administration. Um, in dealing with the transportation office, they failed to get back to me. Unfortunately, at the time, my four-year-old grandson was dropped at the wrong bus stop. PG County Schools 
did not make an effort to try to resolve the issue. We have gotten past that. Oh, please stop crying. I've read many emails. I have met with transportation. I never got a final as to the investigation. I have even written emails to this administration. That day will never go away the way I want it. A kind man beat me, found my grandson on the street, and because he knew the daycare he went to, he took him up the street to the daycare. At this point, I did offer solutions, what you said. I read, brought a four-page letter to the administration. My daughter and I just wanted closure, somebody to say, I'm sorry. We do apologize. The other issue, even still dealing with the transportation department, even on another issue, it was a good idea for the transportation app that was in, you know, this year. I did appreciate it, but even that at times doesn't work, many times more than it should. My other grandson, who's in a higher grade, calls me, even this morning called, Mama, where's the bus? I go to the app, nothing. They don't, the app doesn't inform you. We have to then call the school to say, is the bus coming? I'm at work. I don't know if my grandson will get to that school. So. I thank you all. No, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I'm pretty sure someone will speak with you right after this as well. Next, we'll have a question by Sherry Howard. Hello, everyone, and hello, Dr. Golson. Um, I am a proud parent of a, a child that attends UG schools. Um, I myself attended. Um, but one, one of the things that I did have a question, but um, one, of the, one of the things that really comes to my heart was that I wanted to live somewhere where I can afford, which meant my son needed to go to a school that I may not like. So I decided that I was going to be a part of that school. Um, and so that's what I, I did. And my son is very excited and happy that I'm now the PTO president of his school. I am concerned when he, he has two more years, when he goes to junior high school, I, I have no faith in the school that's in my district for my child to go to that, high, that junior high school. I do have concerns at the school, but my goal is for parent engagement because where you have a lot of low income, some parents aren't engaged, that's, and, and I don't wanna generalize because I live in that neighborhood myself. And some, the teachers are not engaged. So my, my, one of my questions, my, my son's school is a Title I school. How are we, what's, how we're addressing um, to help lower, Title I schools that are low performing to come up to what do you call a blue ribbon school? We had a session with the principal and one of the questions I said, can we have a journey of how we can get there? Whether it's five years, I may not be here, but I want this school to be number one because it's in my neighborhood and it affects my neighborhood. Um, and so that mentoring programs, I had a grandmother say to me today, I, I said, where's your grandson? Oh, he's in, um, he's in uh, detention. I said, well, be patient with him. He is going to come through this. And I said to her, she says, just being a mom with, with boys, they're a grandmother, they don't always hear. And she just mentioned it just be nice to have mentoring programs. I think that's a good idea. Programs. At my son's school, they, no, I mean, I no understand it's an elementary school, but some of these places, the children are going home to know, they're going to a, homes where no one's there. Mm -hmm. And so activities that these children could do, we could do a better job with our children. You, I mean, it's no way they could be the future if we don't make it, make them the future. Thank you, Ms. Howard. We've extended your time. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Next, we'll have Ms. Faye Howell, please. 
come to you on this side. Thank okay. you. Good afternoon. My name is Faye Howell, and I first want to say that I'm here on many fronts, but the main one is my granddaughter is a student at this school. I also am here as a community activist, also here as a um, member, an alumni of Bama Heights High School. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for this beautiful school. We love it. But I also want to bring to your attention that we have several, several issues that are still outstanding. The one thing that I did bring to your attention already was about the indoor, the outdoor track. And you did respond to me, and so did uh, District 27, and so did Belinda Queen with the school board. Everybody responded basically with the same answer that there are some items that still need to be done. What I want to do is make sure that those items get done so we can have, for example, uh, outdoor track. We've been at this school for three years. We've never had a track meet because we can't have one. The track is not set up properly. The, nothing is set up properly. You have none of the field events can be done because they are not set up properly. So thus, if anybody wants to come to Family Heights, they probably won't come because if, they want, if they're interested in track, they probably won't come because they know they can't do track. So my interest is that uh, we get these items straightened out, whatever it takes. If we need to find more funding, I would hope that we can find funding so that this school could operate with that. And also, there are several other issues. And Ms. there, Faye, you have about 30 seconds okay, remaining. Okay, good. There are several um, other Family Heights alumni and people here that are concerned with that. But I just want us to try to resolve those issues so Family Heights can be all that it can be. And I want to thank you all for your time. Thank you, Ms. Faye. Last one in this group is Ms. Dolores Melhouse. Good evening, um, Dolores Melhouse. My child is in fourth grade at Phyllis Lee Williams Spanish Immersion. And I'm coming before you today to say one thank you for the partnerships um, that we've continued to expand on. Um, our school is actually hosting the Family Institute workshop, Help My Child is Changing. And that leads me to the question of really wanting to know and get a good understanding of what strategies do we have in place to address the social and emotional support starting at the elementary school level. Um, because like I see in my own four, um, fourth grader, he's changing, so hormonally, you know, he's starting to experience and um, interact with stimuli a lot differently, which also is putting him in a position that from a behavior perspective, the teacher may see that he's acting out. But just like most of us who, at a certain time of the month, we get emotional. And like they're human beings, they are emotional. So what training is in place for not only the teachers, but the teachers to also interact with the parent, which leads to that engagement piece. And so what's important is that the principal, the AP, and everyone in that school line that has to connect with that child, including outside of the school, we understand how not only we work and support the learning process, but that includes the social and emotional development piece. And I did um, talk to Ms. Nicholson, and I was excited about the work that she does because I believe that we can't do this all by ourselves. And you know I'm here, I'm always saying I have a solution, I don't have all the answers, but I do know that if we actually begin to talk and listen and come together, we can make some headway. And we're doing some great work. And I always say, I'm not going to be more invested or expect you to be more invested in my child than I'm in. So I am very invested in him, and I'm expecting to hold everybody to the same regard. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Melhouse. Thank you so much for this, that group that just came before us. And now we'll move forward with the next group, starting with Raymond Henson. Ms. Dorothy Simon. <coughs> Jamal Salisbury. Mikhail Nell. And Scott Devining, okay. 
finding. Okay, my apologies. All right, thank you. All right, we'll start with Mr. Raymond Henson. Yeah, good evening. Uh, thank you, first of all, Dr. Golson and the teachers and administration. Uh, it's not an easy job for you all to, uh, you know, to do. So I want to just thank you for that. Uh, I'm a I'm a, a alumni of Family Heights High School class of '69, uh, and I'm going to feed back on. I'm here with Miss Faye Howell about the outdoor track uh, situation. So I'm not going to. You're aware of that situation. We got a couple of emails from that, and I I went out personally and took a look took a look at the. Uh, the areas and the situation, and there is a matter of safety involved there. I'm a uh, track coach at youth. Uh, I, I coach uh, for the Glen Harden track team, and I'm a Potomac Valley uh, official. I uh, officiate the long jump, triple jump, and officiate track meets. So I, I'm very aware of the situation that the track is not you know, the runways and the long jump, the triple jump, the shot put area, the uh, discus area. So I'm just here. We'll be following up to try to get these things done. This is a new school, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's no reason why, you know, hopefully they can get the equipment and things updated so the kids can utilize that uh, facility. And equipment-wise, they need hurdles, you know, those things. So I will be working with Ms. Howell, Ms. Howell and a couple of other people. Coach Yvonne is a very good coach, and we need to get him, uh, get the facility straight so that he can hold track meet chair for our youth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Henson. We'll now have Ms. Dorothy Simons. Good evening. Um, I'm Dorothy Simmons, and I'm the mother of a parent at, of a kid that attends CMIT North High School. Um, for the first, what, we've been in school six weeks, eight weeks, and when I tell you it's been terrible, the climate is terrible, the atmosphere is terrible, and we've been dealing with this since September. We sent emails, we talked to the principal, we met with the principal, we talked to the county charter office, we talked to the, them and the principal together. We can't come to a resolution. At this point, parents are being told if we don't like it, we need to leave. As a taxpayer in Prince George's County, with all of the taxes that I pay, for federal, state, that's unacceptable for me to get from my school administration. They have made the statement to us, and we have received it from the county. There is a lot going on in our building. We have bathrooms with doors, but because they said things happened last school year that they never reported to parents as issues, they have our bathroom doors wide open. If you're a female, do you want to go in the door in a bathroom that don't have a privacy wall and use the bathroom with people walking by, classrooms where kids can walk in? The same for our boys. We are asking that we get some resolution to some of these issues, and we need the support of the county at this point. We've went to the administration, we've gone to the board. The board sends us to the county, the county sends us back to the board. So we are asking for some support from somewhere because it is very draining and if I take my kid out of the public school, I want my tax money back. Thank you very much. Mr. Jamal Salisbury. How you doing today? Um, I actually have a, a child at the same high, uh, high school that she's at and I have two younger kids at um, elementary school. Um, interestingly enough, um, I came to you maybe in one of your uh, coffee, coffee uh, at Starbucks, and I asked you, um, my question was basically about the toxicity in the school. And the toxicity at the school I was referring to was the CMIT elementary school. At the time, th the principal at the high school was at the elementary school. Um, by June, we, me and my wife had decided we were gonna take, we were gonna take our kids out. Um, but we changed our mind and said, you know what, there's a new principal coming to elementary school, let's give her a shot. 
the same time, we were nervous about the fact that the same principal that we had issues with coming to the high school, you know, what was that going to be? To me, um, at, the at the high school, there were no issues. Within two weeks, I watched as a parent volunteer who turned into a um, employee of the school got fired. The same thing happened at the elementary school. And so my question is simple like this. Um, I watched the, I watched the re response from leadership. Um, I, I read the email. Um, it's under new management. That's what the email quoted up in there. Um, over a school that I hear all these issues with other schools that was not at this school before. What do you? How, how are we going about hiring these principals? <laughs> you know, what I will say is this: with, at the elementary school currently, with my current two kids, um, within the first month, we were so nervous about taking our kids to that school. The new principal has turned the school totally around. She involved parents. Um, I've worked with these parents for a number of years. I'm an I'm a avid volunteer. I'm there every Saturday. Um, I've worked with the students. The students come up to me. When the student comes up to me um, and they s I ask them how they're doing, they say, everything's going on well except all the, the, you know, the, the toxicity in the schools just totally changed. You look at the emails coming from the, the school. They're cutting out things from Spirit Week. You know, this is the last time you know, I got my kid at a high school. You know, if I want to make a decision on and say, well, you know, I want to take my kid, she's a smart A student and move her to a high school, well, I don't have any options. <laughs> I don't have any. I, I've, believe you me, this summer I looked into it. <laughs> so, Mr. Salisbury, you have about 20 more seconds. Thank you. So what, I, what, I, um, what I'll say is this, you know, um, we really need to look at the how, um, I say, you know, for the elementary school principal, look at what she's doing at the high school and see how we can apply it to other principals at other schools. And because she, she did give a great presentation on how you how principal should be. And you're a former principal. I'm sure that you can agree with me on some of that. Thank you so much. Right. I appreciate it. Ms. McHale. Um, my name is Makai Matthews Nail. I'm go to Overlook Spanish Emerging Fan. Uh, Overlook Spanish Immersion Full Spanish School, and I'm in fifth grade, about to go to middle school. Um, one day, we, I'm concerned about why do we have chain swings, because one day this girl was swinging really high, and the chain broke, so she flipped off. So She flipped off, you said the swing? Yeah, she flipped okay. off the swing. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Good question. And let's give her a hand for coming down. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Mr. Scott? Good evening. My name is Scott Vining. I was listening to this gentleman earlier. He did a fine job of speaking as well as the others in here. Uh, he's just, you know, kind of pondering the thought about this. And it's more commentary than it is, you know, high level concern or anything, but uh, I was sitting here trying to listen to everything going on in the back and trying to hop onto the Wi-Fi system. You all have a very secure system around here. You got to get fingerprinted for volunteering, all that kind of stuff. With regard to everything, I got fingerprinted before my daughter ended kindergarten 10 years ago, and accordingly, you know, she's still going strong and I'm still fingerprinted and everything, but I was just sitting here thinking to myself, you know, looking at it from the perspective of the way this gentleman was talking about bringing solutions. If you are in a position where you are fingerprinted, eligible to volunteer into the schools and all that kind of stuff, those of us who are ought to be able to get some kind of, uh, you know, check and balance system where, one, you ought to be able to get a, a badge to go into the school only that you are representing at the time. Currently, my daughter's going to Central High School for the IB program, and that's where my, uh, you know, focus would be with regard to everything. Uh, I spent over 15 minutes trying to get onto your Wi-Fi system by, you know, pulling up somebody's name 
that's actually in this audience today, and he and I were working on it because he's here in the audience, mm -hmm. and we spent 15 minutes, and we still couldn't get through the system of, you know, basically Horton Knox of the Wi-Fi <laughs> in order to get on to something like this after hours when, you know, the kids are back home doing their homework and all that kind of stuff. Mr. Scott, you have about 30 seconds remaining. And that's pretty much all I had to <laughs> okay. say. And other than that, <laughs> just, you know, be nice to find a simpler way for those of us who have gone through those hurdles to be able to get on it without, you know, pounding our head against the wall. Thank you. Thank you so all. very much. Good Thank comment you. and question. We appreciate it. We're moving forward with the next group is Miss Wanda Finch. Yes, Wanda Finch, followed by Mr. Lomax Fraser. Mr. Lomax. Okay. Followed by Isaac Farmer. Mr. Isaac Farmer. Okay. Followed by are you Mr. Isaac Farmer? Okay. Followed by Mayor Takesha Jones. I'm um, Takesha James. I'm sorry, Mayor James. Mayor James making her way. Okay. And Isaiah Horner. Wanda Fitch. Good evening, Dr. Goldson. Thank you for having another listening session. I, like many of the other parents here, I'm also a parent at CMIT North High School. This is my sixth year there, second student. It's a senior. We'll be graduating, thankfully, in June. However, I leave with a heavy heart this year because many of the concerns that I've heard from some other parents at other schools who are not even in our district, we're experiencing a lot of the same issues, communication, lack of accountability. And the bigger problem, you know, this is one of the wealthiest counties in the country. That's the home of hundreds if not thousands of African American families. Why can we not invest and do right by our children? And I have to say it tonight, and I hope I'm not offending anyone in here, but I, I'm, I'm from the South, so I'm going to give it to you straight. I don't understand how we can be one of the wealthiest counties in the country and our children are having their rights violated, as in some of the examples you've heard earlier about the bathrooms. Parents are not being notified about policy changes as if we're supposed to know and, you know, we have an open book to their office or their notes to know what actually transpired last year. We've got to do a much better job with that. And it sounds that many of the parents here tonight have many solutions to help you, to help your team and your staff. And I hope that you will invite us to do that, perhaps establishing a task force to work with the Office of Parent Engagement to help eradicate some of these issues that we're dealing with. And to add to that list, I don't understand why our public charter school office seems to be led by one or two people. The charter schools are beating to their own drum. It's not, um, it's not until they begin to hear from us through emails or letters or we come here and we talk with you that they begin to say, well, yeah, we are a part of the system, but yet and still they're violating many of the rights of the students and parents. It's not right, and we need to figure out a way how to make parents part of the village to invest in all of our children. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Mr. Isaac Farmer. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Isaac Farmer. I'm here from the Huddle. Um, the Huddle is an organization that provides exposure to high school students. Um, our goal is to do high school sports, preferably starting out with basketball. So what we like to do is bring back the high school sports show, which provides exposures for kids to go to school. We would like to actually utilize interns within the school to put on a show um, within the studio that's pretty much like the one that I have here at Fenmont Heights. But utilize the stu students to 
um, help produ produce the show where we can um, provide access for the kids at the gym for when they play the games to do pre and post game interviews as well as do highlights at the game and do picture highlights of the players who play in the game so they can get be exposed by college recruits. Um, the huddle would like to also bring back and increase their enrollment inside of PG County schools. Um, instead of school kids from middle school playing AU going to private schools, the kids in the community can stay within Prince George's County public school systems, play basketball, football, whatever sport they want to play, and knowing that they will be exposed and college recruits will be able to see them because a lot of college recruits right now go to a lot of the private schools because they're playing the top talent. But if the kids know that they're being exposed and being featured on a high school sports show, feature where college recruits can actually see them play and showcase their talents, they will be more accountable and their parents will say, hey look, won't you go to the school that's right next door to us instead of being shipped out to a private school. So that is our goal as the huddle. We want to provide kids the opportunity of being seen and have college recruits come into the schools and say, hey, I want to see this kid play, I want to see that kid play, and not just losing them all to the private schools. Mm -hmm. So that is our goal, and we would like to definitely work with, we actually work with all the basketball coaches right now. We actually was actually invited to the basketball coaches meeting they had two or three weeks ago, and sat in and, and let them know, hey, how we can help them, and they was on board. So we would like for y'all to be on board and to get the, school, to get the students um, exposed. Thank you so much, Mr. Absolutely. Brown. Great idea. Thank Thanks. you. Next, we'll have Ms. Ms. Lomax Frazier. Good evening, Dr. Golson. And I stand here, excuse me, my name is Lolita Lomax Frazier. Uh, with me, I have Devon Johnson, also Pamela Roblin, and Amber Scott. We are school counselors at Eleanor Roosevelt High School. When we received the email, our mind started ticking of things that we could do we came with solutions, we pray and we hope, and we have those written for you this, this evening. So you don't have to take a whole lot of notes. But we are trying to improve and become more efficient and effective counselors to meet students' needs and school goals. There are some things that we have noticed that are significantly impacting the product productivity, not only of our school counselors, but our, our schools overall. And to limit time, like I said, we just want to provide you with the outline of concerns, possible solutions, and the impact these changes would have systemically. Thank you for your time. Thank you so very much. Yes, yeah, someone will get it. We'll receive it from you. Thank you. Next, we'll have Mayor James from the town of Ladysburg. Good evening, Dr. Golson and staff. Uh, just a few comments, and first, thank you for the opportunity to be here. As I've shared um, in previous conversations, still advocating for the new track and field for our student athletes who desperately need safe conditions to perform at their optimal ability. And then secondly, just wanted to share a concept, um, particularly given that we're in an urban sort of environment in Bladensburg. If there would be interest in piloting a program uh, for Friday nights to keep our student athletes and student scholars off the streets and perhaps opening one of the seven area schools in Bladensburg where we could uh, feed some of the students. Uh, as you know, income-wise, some people struggle to put food on the table consistently, and so it would be awesome if our public school <coughs> excuse me, could be uh, there to provide an opportunity to have safe space for our children to play, to be tutored, uh, but to also have resources to feed them. And of course, the town would be very willing to help fund something of this nature. So thank you again for your time. Thank you, Mayor James. And this is our last question or comment from Mr. Isaiah Coleman. Uh, good afternoon. Well, good evening, rather, everybody. Thank you so much, Dr. Goldson. Um, I want to thank, first of all, Dr. Goldson and our um, Associate Superintendent of High Schools and Alternative schools, Dr. Merrill, I count them as both my inspirations of wanting to go into the field of education. Um, so I thank you for your time. My concern is, um, which has been heard a lot tonight, is about transportation. Um, sometimes in the evening going home, I have the predicament of buses being 15, 20, 30 minutes late. 
or sometimes the bus is not showing up at all and we have to try to figure out a way to get home. Um, another issue that I have and concern that I have, and I'm gonna feed off of Ms. Coleman is, um, you know, we have these certain things that are put in place to help um, students that are going through bullying, physical, emotional, cyber, but um, we kind of set them at the level of just older students. You know, it's not a whole lot for the younger students that go to school. I was in fifth grade elementary school and I was bullied to the point where I wanted to commit suicide. So I think it's very important that we try to um, not just offer it for the high school or middle school students, but we also offer it for those that are younger because bullying can happen to anybody. It can happen to an adult, you know. So thank you, Dr. Goldsmith. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for taking your time out to ask questions and comments and provide some solutions in some areas. At this time, I'll have Dr. Goldson come up to do her wrap up. All right, I'm gonna do the summary of tonight's comments. Um, the first one started, if a person has a concern and have addressed it at the school level, what is the next step? Northwestern High School needs to be monitored. There's been a lack of teachers and lack of instruction. History is extremely important. Why haven't we found, we, we haven't made an effort to teach our students the true history of our country. Bladensburg High School staff is concerned about school climate between teachers and administrators. Some of the areas are the administration of classroom keys, climate control, core classes taught by subs, lack of lesson plans for subs, late schedule changes, limited parking. Alerts have been made to the hotline to express their concerns and there's been a large exodus of teachers. There were two questions or comments about how are we addressing student-teacher ratio at Title I schools. Woke organization would like to offer service and support around brainstorming ways that we can tackle our four major themes of concern. They're willing to offer training and support for school leaders in the area of social-emotional supports, master schedule, student safety, and utilization of resources. The question was posed of how can we bring on consultants and businesses to help as well in transportation. Bullying comprehensive program was shared with staff um, last week. Four of the five schools that were selected to pilot the program did not use the program to fidelity. Um, the person who created the program is willing to help with implementation of the program to ensure that all schools utilize our bullying program. There are 30 to 31 students in a first grade class that needs to be monitored um, to reduce class size. Will there be more than one location for evening school courses? Benjamin Tasker needs support for implementing non-bullying strategies. How are schools trained on bullying issues? And central office staff needs to be retrained on how to handle calls concerning bullying. National Bullying Day should have been celebrated by all staff and not a designated few. Coral Rice, first grade student, is required to have a one-on-one -on -one aid and has not been provided. Notice has been given that a person will be assigned by December. Parent emailed me, received a response that Dr. Mason will provide a response back and that has not happened. Um, the playground at Coral Rice needs to be updated, class size needs to be monitored, and the substitute or teaching classes. Bladensburg High School on October 16th noticed a class was missing on school maps and no students enrolled in the class. Canceling of a class by administration was, teacher was told that canceling of a class by administration was under the authority and purview of the principal. The larger issue at the school is the lack of communication. What are the procedures for a class of three students that the teacher just received? and grades are due. Library media services still needs assistance to assure that the ratio for students to library media specialist teachers are reduced. Research materials and supports for our libraries need to be updated. We should look at staffing levels and also redistrict and reduce class size. Facility needs a lift to put lights in. Um, if we want to continue to have, let me take that back, contact Dr. David Nash if you want to, from the National Library of Medicine, if you want to have something change, and he has an open door in order to discuss solutions and that we all must come together. There were four comments on CMIT North High School. Many of them were around parents being concerned about school climate and bullying by the charter school administration and governing board. Have our charter schools included in the training for bullying? How will Prince George's County Public Schools and the governing board help to ensure mutual respect is provided to parents? from school administration. There's a wonderful principal at Fairmont Heights High School. 
can, revisit how, can we revisit how to move a diverse school community, create a more diverse school community? Our community and workforce is diverse and should be reflected in our schools. Parent is concerned about transportation not getting back to them after losing their child under the previous administration. They would like a written response closing the case. The buses are still late and the app needs to be updated to, a late, to alert parents about the late buses. Parent has decided to support a school as a PTSA leader, but that parent is still concerned about the middle school location for her child, but remains committed to being engaged. How are we gonna work to improve our Title I schools to become blue ribbon schools? We also need to add mentoring programs in our schools. Thank you for the new Fairmont Heights High School. There are still outstanding issues that need to be resolved for the track and school board that must be addressed. If more funding is needed, they, staff and alumni will be willing to help to work together to find those funds. P.E. Williams, thank you for our continued partnership. What strategies do we have in place to address the social and emotional needs for our elementary students, parents, teachers, and administrators? Fairmont Heights High School class of 1969 alumni is also concerned about the status of the track and student safety. Second parent concern from CM CMIT North, um, the parents' experience has been terrible for the first eight weeks. Parents have spoken to the principal and governing board and have not been able to make a headway with the resolution on their issues. They need assistance from administration. Third concern from CMIT was concerned about CMIT elementary school's toxic environment. And then the principal moved from the elementary level to the high school level. How are charter schools hiring their principals? Emails from administration have been sent out and are not pleasant. Overlooked Spanish immersion student, concerned about playground equipment and swings. Um, community member pondered if we can, if parents are volunteers and are doing all they need to do to support our schools, is it possible for them to receive a badge to enter the building on a regular basis and access in an easier way to access Wi-Fi? Um, the fourth concern for CMIT North Parent concerned about communication, lack of accountability. Why can't we as a school system do right by our students? Our students' rights are being violated and why has the charter school office not been monitoring our charter schools? The Huddle organization would like to partner with Prince George's County Public Schools to support our students with the production of athletic events. And middle school students' exposure to college recruits is also needed. Professional school counselors from Eleanor Roosevelt came with a list of solutions on how we can become more effective and efficient as professional school counselors in a school system. They provided those concerns and solutions on paper. Bladensburg, Bladensburg High School is looking for a pilot of free Friday evening supports for students to keep them off the street by providing a safe place for students to gather and to also be fair. Transportation um, buses are sometimes uh, late up to 30 minutes or don't show. Can we please work to improve our transportation for our students and bullying, bullying strategies should be immersed and offered for grades K2 through 12. That concludes this evening's listening session. I thank you so much for your responses tonight. Um, not only did I take notes, but we also have a staff member who takes notes. The, from all three sessions, I then meet with my team so that we can begin to tackle each of all of the issues that were presented tonight. Thank you for your time. Your voice matters. Have an amazing and safe journey home.